everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me. So today I'm going to show you how to make faux metal book corners. Okay, we're going to make these ourselves out of scraps. And the reason we're going to make them instead of buying them is because it saves us money. Um, it's more fun to make as many elements for your journals as possible. It's a good way to use up your scraps, it's a good way to use your um, inks and things like that and your embossing folders and you know once you get the hang of it it doesn't take very long. So what you're going to need is a for the for smaller ones so these are more like photograph corners okay the larger ones could be book corners. So today we're going to make these and these are made from a one inch square and that one is a two inch. So you just adjust the size independent on how big you want it. So we're doing the smaller ones and uh, so you're going to start with a one inch wide strip now it's going to eventually be cut to a one inch square but i've left it a little bit longer so i've got something to hold okay it just makes it easier on yourself then get yourself a ball tool if you don't have a scoring board you can use a ruler just make sure you're on a non-slip surface to make it easier for yourself if you don't have a ball tool you can use any kind of blunt instrument the end of the paintbrush or something similar and um, the smaller the ball tool head the better result you'll get because it's going to give you um, smaller scar marks you know um, right so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to score on the long side at quarter of an inch now if you do struggle uh, with you know holding small items maybe you don't have very good motor skills for whatever reason what you can do is you can move on over to the six inch mark and you can score from there or you can turn it the other way around and do your scoring at that side whichever is easiest for you um, you know it doesn't have to be fiddler just work around it so we've done a quarter of an inch on the short side we're going to do the same on the long side now I just need to make sure I stay in short Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to go back in with a pencil. So I'll do it at the six inch mark so you can see what I'm doing. And um, in fact, I'm just going to, yeah. So on the long side, what we're going to do is you need a half an inch pencil mark. So we're going to use our scoreboard to help us with accuracy. So I'm up at the six inch there and I'm going to the six and a half inch and I'm making myself a half an inch line with my pencil. Then I'm going to turn it on the long side and I'm going to do the same. I want a line at half an inch. Okay, you can go the full length of whatever piece that you're holding. Okay, just to make it easy for yourself. So then on one side you've got this double score line and a double cross. At this stage we now want to cut this to a one inch square. So keep the cross, all the cross sections to the right hand side of your trimmer or if you're using scissors, measure it and cut it and cut it down to one inches. Which then gives you a one inch by one inch square. Okay, now that's why we start with a longer piece than we need because it's a small piece and it, it can be a bit fiddler. Okay, but it's not hard to do um, if you keep that piece longer. So then what we want to do is we're getting some um, scissors which have got what I call, everything rolls about on my desk, <laughs> pointer and narrow blades. Okay, I've got some scissors, I've got another, but here we go. I've got another pair of scissors here. These are much bigger and so you can see the thickness of those blades. They're quite chunky. You need the thinnest scissors you can find for precision because it's a small project. Okay, so what we're going to do now, you can see where the score lines meet each other. Okay, so along that axis there, you've got there. And if you were to draw a straight line, it should line up more or less with the two points of pencil mark as well. Okay, so if you put it on the on the wonk like that, you should be able to use the pencil marks more or less where they meet and cut across the centre of that score line. Okay. Um, if your pencil marks don't quite meet up, just just do it by eye and just make sure you're going across. Okay, that then frees up this and we're going to fold them. Okay, where our score lines are. Alright, then we're going to go back. We're just going to make sure that where we've cut them there, okay, I'm going a bit wonky with the, that they don't overlap. And if they do overlap, just snip a bit off and self-adjust. Okay, and what we're also going to do is fold it back out. The two left, the two corners there, 
okay, that are left over, we're going to snip those down to the score line so we're notching, for want of a better word. Okay, so when you've done that, okay, we now want to cut away this larger square here. Cut that away so that you then have this shape. Okay, you can see what is coming, can't you? <laughs> so now what you want to do is fold those flaps back, turn it over, and, you know, if you've cut those nicely, you can use them as a guide for cutting your front layer. Just make sure that you cut your front layer a little bit longer than your back layer so that they don't uh, show, so that the back, the back doesn't show through when you've done. The, not that it will, because it'll be underneath a project, but there you go. Okay, then open it so then you've got the shape. Okay, open it back out, remove your pencil markings. Although, depending on what colour you're going to change it to, it doesn't matter. Remember, it doesn't matter what you use, use scraps, it doesn't have to be craft. It can be black, it can be white card, you can change the colour of, of your card. Use anything. Um, you do want card because you want it to be quite sturdy. Okay, so what do you do with these? I'm going to show you a final step in a moment, but what you do is, obviously you can put them on the corners of your photos. It looks uh, cool when you add it to your journal, it's a little extra step, decorative, but also, you know, you glue those to the page and you can actually remove your photos if you so desire, okay? Now I'm going to show you how to make them even more decorative. My camera's a little bit wonky, let me just straighten it. There we go. I'm going to show you how to make them even more decorative. So you unfold it and you put it inside. I've got one there I made earlier. Find a busy embossing folder. Okay, If you haven't got one, it doesn't matter, but it just adds to it. So the busiest one you can find, put it in, run it through your embossing folder flat. Okay, So it will come out like this. Okay with the obviously the embossing now you'll still be able to just gently fold you, you should the the card should, should still remember where those scar lines are so then you've got this okay then what you're going to do is fold it back out just to make your life a bit easier go in with some kind of distress ink i'm going to use walnut stain just because it's dark and it'll show up nicer and very gently go over the top of the embossing okay then fold it up. Remember not to squeeze too hard. You don't want to flatten out the pattern that you've made. Okay. So then you've got that. And then to go a step extra, if you have it in your stash, get some gilding wax or metallic style um, acrylic paint, whatever you've got that's a metallic -y kind of colour. I've got some of this gilding wax here that I had gifted and that I found the easiest way to um, add it is with a dry brush. But I've used acrylic paint and just rubbed it over with my finger before. You know, a metallic acrylic paint will do the same job. And then lightly dust over where you've done your embossing and the crease. Well, just go over all of it, you might as well. <laughs> okay. And then obviously once that's dried, you fold them back over and your photo corner or book corner is ready to go and you've got that metallic shine. Okay, now it's worth um, trying and worth giving a go. The first one might seem fiddly, but once you're on a roll, you can make loads of these in next to no time. Saves you from buying expensive dies or punches that you might only use a couple of times. It saves you buying metal pieces from China and waiting, you know, a month for them to arrive. And uh, you can make them whatever cut, you know, obviously whatever colour you want in either instance. But um, how satisfying is it when you're doing a journal and you know that all of the bits that you possibly can make yourself by hand you have done um, and then when you're looking at your project you feel extra proud so there you go and then like I say you can make them larger to go on the corner of your books you know on your covers so these would go on your photos you can even add them t to the corner of tags for a decorative element let me just show you and they look super cool. Okay. And you can see the shimmer. 
and then these would go on a you know you could put them on a on a book cover okay so there you go and that's how you make your fake metal book corners hope you'll give that a try hope it's useful thanks for watching take care and i'll see you soon bye bye for now